Destination Newry, live television to the world uh, from Railway Avenue here at the very heart of the traditional town of Newry. Uh, nowadays we're a city, we're, we're going up market, we're in the, the world of digital technology and web streaming and all the rest of it. With me in studio I've got Shauna Pentony, a student from St Paul's in Bestbrook out on the Green Road, and Christine Ferran, uh, the head of year for uh, sociology and uh, what else do you health do? And, health and social health care and as well. Health and social care as well. And you're just back. The, the school has been to, uh, on, on a project, to Dublin, to Parliament in Dublin, to the Parliament in Belfast, and to the Parliament, the European Parliament in Strasbourg. Yeah. Many of you went. There was 25 of us all together, and we were from all over Northern Ireland. So. Oh, you, you went with your ladies' lot? Yeah, no, we, that was a different one. We went with the Rotary Club. Hey, you're Rotary? Yeah, we went with the Rotary Club. What's your connection with Rotary? Um, I didn't really know much about Rotary before. It was Donald McAlinden. He, I can know Donald very yeah, well. Yeah. Great fisherman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Um, he ran it with the school, and it was uh -huh. Miss Fern that had told me about it. And you know, I got to do an interview with, in the school. Yeah. And then moved on to the second round, which was an interview within the Rotary Club, and then okay. the final in the Ballymac, yeah. which I won. And wow! It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> if you would, Christine, tell me about the connection with Rotary, how it all came about. Yeah, every year Donald contacts us, and sort of this project is about young leaders. Yeah. And the Rotary Club in Uri is keen to promote leaders mm -hmm. among our young people. So in around September time, he contacts us and we throw it out to our year group, our year 13s, mm -hmm. and see who of them are interested in perhaps participating in an internal trawl. Mm -hmm. So Donald and one of uh, a fellow Rotarian, they come in and they interview, I think it was six or eight of our year 13 students, boys and girls, whoever's interested, who think they have good leadership qualities and skills, and whoever we target, you know, uh -huh. we think, look, there's somebody who could do well in this interview. Yeah. So from that, they come in, they spoke to all eight students individually, asked them random questions, asked them about who their inspirational leaders were, things like that. And from that initial trawl, Shauna was the one who yeah. was picked to go on to the Newry and Moore and Heat to represent St Paul's. Okay. And wh what, were you, what were you fighting to achieve? What were you going for? What was the prize as defined by Rotary? Well, then it really we felt it was a good honour, a good achievement to be picked out from within our own school because we have 200 year 13 students. So mm -hmm. that in itself was to an do achievement. What? To do what? To picked go out to do what? To go exactly. and speak about leadership. To speak? Uh, to speak about leadership. And you would speak in the Parliament? No, well, initially then you went and um, Shauna participated in Urian Morn Heat. Yes. And there were representatives from all the schools in Urian Morn as yeah. well. And Shauna won that heat. Yeah. And from that, she went on then to the regional final, which yeah. was held in the Valley Mac out in Dundalk, County yeah. Louth. I understand that bit. What I'm trying to get at is what prize did you get for succeeding? Well, I think you got um, £100. And yeah, I got, hundred, I got £100. And the travelling to the Parliament. Yeah, yes. that was all paid for. So when you go to the Parliament, what did you do there? We got to ask questions. We um, The first one we went to was Stormont, and we had a representative from each of the parties within Stormont and we had to ask them questions like one of the biggest things we were talking about was education and the bringing in, they're bringing in STEM up here because they don't What is STEM? Uh, science, technology, engineering and maths are trying to promote more vocational subjects and one of the questions that was asked a lot was how they're trying to promote it towards females because it's yeah. always been male dominated so you know there's a massive debate there mm. um, and then we got to go and watch a debate uh, I think Instalment. It, yeah, we got to watch. I think it was on education. Mm. I can't really remember. It was, yeah, it was. It was you were up in the gallery looking yeah, down. Yeah, it was really cool, you know. Um, Did you bring cabbages, rotten cabbages, with no, you? No. <laughs> were you tempted? Tempted a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So then, from from Belfast, you then went to Dublin. Yeah, we got to the doll. Yeah, we went to the doll. Who greeted you in the doll? Uh, we got Simon Harris yeah. from Fianna Fáil, I think. He's yeah, Fianna Fáil. Um, and he talked to us about his journey in politics because, you know, Fianna Fáil has been a massive talking point in southern politics over the past number of years. So it was interesting to see his point of view mm. and where the things have gone wrong. And to be honest, I really liked him. He, yeah. you know, he was able to take everything bad that was said about him and take it and make it good. Make it good, <laughs> absolutely. And now, on the island, uh, on a scale of zero to ten, ten being excellent, zero being rubbish, uh, where would you put, uh, where would you put y your experience of seeing what was going on, their ability to impress you? Where would you put Stormont? Um, about an eight. An eight for Stormont. Yeah. And where would you be? Where would you put the doll? Nine. Nine. Yeah. You are a politician. <laughs> You're such a clever girl, I tell you. <laughs> now, 
you got in the big bird and off you went to Strasbourg. Yeah, we went to Strasbourg on the Wednesday. We flew out to Frankfurt originally and travelled from Frankfurt to Had Strasbourg. Had you been there before? No, I'd never been to any of those areas before. I'd been to Paris, but Strasbourg was completely different, you know. It was great to get to be a tourist for a day because you yeah. were given a free day and we got oh, to go Oh, sorry around. about this. It could be the Prime Minister I'm expecting a call Good. from. You don't mind if we interview no. him on the programme, <laughs> do you? Uh, no, so Hello? I'll ring you back, Prime Minister. I'm live on air just at the moment. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Take care. He's very decent. <laughs> He's a good man. He mentioned you. He <laughs> said that he'd heard about you from Strasbourg. <laughs> you know. So listen to me. Tell me this. When you went to Strasbourg, what was your initial impression of Strasbourg? It was, it was amazing. It was like something you'd see in a movie. You know, it was really, it was really old. All the buildings. Wow. It was fantastic. Like there was one boy and he was on the trip with us and he was doing architecture. Yeah. He wants to go on and do architecture and he was telling us all these facts about the buildings and that's one of the greatest things I got from the trip was learning so much from everyone else, you know, yeah. taking everyone else's experience. Aren't you very clever? <laughs> God give you two ears and one mouth. <laughs> so you listen twice as much as you talk. <laughs> yeah. Now, we go into the parliament in Strasbourg. Yeah. You walk into the great conference bowl. Wow, the size of it. What impressed you about it? The amount of people, the sheer amount of room in it, you know, those 500 students from 28 member states all across yeah. the EU. And that was one of the, the things that impressed me the most, you know, the sheer amount of people that could fit in the room. And then the fact that we got to sit where the MEPs would have yeah. sat, that was amazing, you know. Did it, Shauna, did it give you the feeling of being at home, going into the Strasbourg Parliament, your Parliament, because you're a European, did you feel you were going home politically? Yeah, I did. You know, I'm a strong believer in the, you know, Abraham Lincoln once said, a house divided cannot stand. And I think the EU is one of those things that you need to remember because it holds us together in times whenever maybe we're not. Yeah, and also equips us to reach out to a, in a world scenario because even in the Ukraine at the moment, in the yeah. horribleness of Kiev, yeah. Europe, Europe is taking a lead there and yeah. trying to make a difference with aid to go to them mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, I definitely think think they're making the right decision to try and go in. It's I think they just really need to think how they're going to go in and how they're going to do it to make sure they don't make anyone angry and they need to think about. It made Russia angry already. Yeah, I know that was inevitable though. <laughs> <laughs> You're proud of this girl, aren't she's you? She's excellent. Very, very bright, intelligent young woman. She's a great young woman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what about what? You know, are you tempted to go to politics yourself? I'm not really sure. I'm thinking about going into maybe law, politics. I've definitely cons I'm definitely going to consider politics after this trip. It's definitely something I'm going to consider. Yeah. You know, it helped me get into politics a lot more. You know, politics isn't really promoted in a lot of schools. It's something that not a lot of people know about. And with the voting age being lowered to 16, mm -hmm. it definitely should be. Like that's one thing I definitely learned. Would would you would you understand what I was saying to you if I if I suggested to you that politics is not an honourable profession because most pol politicians. That's, that's wrong, and I correct myself immediately, that some politicians uh, lead from behind. They, want, they give the people what they want yeah. rather than what they believe is right. Yeah, that's one thing. Whenever I came home and I told my mum that I was thinking about going into politics, that was one thing she said, you know, if you're going to go into politics, you need to realise that you need to stick true to what you want to do and not bend over backwards for someone else. You know, like I think an awful lot of politicians these days, instead of... They said they're going to do all this and then they never do because they don't think it's going to please the majority. And if there's two flies walking up a window pane on Monaghan Street, you'll have six politicians there for the different press photographs. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and but the statement of the obvious. An option for Shauna, she's interested in law, but an option for Shauna, for example, Queen's University do a great degree law with politics. Law with politics, You know, so yeah. that's something that... huge, yeah. Mm -hmm. You could be a Prime Minister, I reckon. <laughs> It'd be an really extraordinarily communicative and articulate woman. You're great. Thank you. It's, it's, she's impressive. Yeah, did the Rotary Club are very impressed with yeah, her. Yeah, well, that was fantastic. Get them to mentor you and make sure they keep in close contact with you. And what, what's the, the women's equivalent to Rotary? Um, I don't know. They've only recently brought in the women's Rotary. I think it was in Dublin. It was yeah, actually well, first why don't you start in. women's Rotary in Europe? Yeah, no, I'm definitely... Put your I'm, foot down and make sure that they do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going in on Monday, I think, actually, to kind of go out to tell them about... You'll my, be debriefing them? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, that'll be good. Definitely yeah. talking to them. So what's your history? Where do you come from? Uh, Bestbrook. You're a Bestbrook girl. Bestbrook. And uh, where has your, your very substantial interest 
in the world around you. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Um, well, it's come from my mum, you know, from a very young age. She told me to get the most out of life that I could. And my dad, you know, they always told me to take every opportunity as it comes. And, you know, I didn't want to be one of these people that kind of stayed and didn't experience the world around them. So every opportunity that I get, I try and take it with both yeah. hands. She's a great musician as well. What do you play? Um, guitar, African drums and violin. I start telling you a lovely thing, and this you'll remember this when you're an old woman, maybe. <laughs> I and my wife, we started our eldest daughter on the violin. Yeah. And uh, she still plays. And her eldest son is uh, an organist in the Dominican church now. Yeah. He plays the violin, he plays the flute, plays the piano. So you'll be passing on the mu musicality yeah. as it comes. Yeah, whenever we have family get-togethers, my niece, I'm trying to teach her <laughs> the guitar at the minute. It's not working out too well, but she'll get it eventually. Yeah, it's important to do yeah, that. Yeah, I think music's really important. I think it's a way Yeah, but I mean, it's on the other end of the thing. spectrum. It's the other side of the coin. If you're yeah. going to be a politician and a, a lawyer, uh, and if you're going to be a lawyer, I would hope you would be a barrister, rather because there's the excitement, yeah. the cut and thrust, the theatre yeah. of the court. Yeah. Uh, whereas being a solicitor, you're just you're a pen. Yeah, I think I would like, go barrister. I think you would. Yeah, route. yeah. She's a very good speaker. She's well capable of something like that. Oh, I can see this mm -hmm. absolutely, but uh, it's it's a it's a matter of going for it, as you say, and making the best of it. Your school is more and more the mentor of people like Shona. Yeah. It's your, it's your philosophy. Uh, absolutely. It's that non-selective thing and kids in at 11, it doesn't matter to us about exams or transfer tests or anything like that, and throw every opportunity possible at them uh, in terms of academic, in terms of sport, music, vocational, work mm -hmm. experience, all that type of thing. So, you know, there's something there for everybody, I think, is the beauty about St. Paul's. Um, this girl is very bright and, and very confident and she's doing A-level uh, sociology, history and music and we'll go far yeah. and then we've other kids who are doing different types of subjects that meet their needs which is brilliant but I mean we were heavily involved with the Rotary Club this is our first big success and um, as regards that so we're very excited about it and uh, we're involved with Newry Lions as well we've had continued success year after yeah. year there we like getting involved with the community we like getting involved with our community organizations to offer mm -hmm. additional opportunities to our students. When do you go to, uh, to university? Um, not this September, the following September. Following September. Mm -hmm. And uh, what way are your grades shaping up? Um, I think I'm, I'm hoping to get to a stars in an A. I'm Aye. hoping, if I put in enough work, I'm hoping that's what I'm yeah. going to get. Mm. She's got excellent GCSE results. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's on track. Oh, good. Yes. And will you go overseas or away from I'm Northern not, Ireland? I'm not really sure yet. I want to just try and take mm. look at every opportunity and not yeah. kind of overpass anything. You know, I think if I was going to go to England, maybe if the courses are going to suit me better than they would over here, mm. well, that's just the case. Or if the courses over here suit me better than they would England, that's... And look look at a place. You know, I think uh, I would... <laughs> I, I, who am I to advise? But uh, the beautiful uh, universities in the south of England. Uh, yeah. Um, Exeter and places like this. Absolutely lovely. York. It's important, I think, in order to facilitate... The, the effort you're going to put into study over four or five years to be surrounded by beauty, exactly. lovely things. Yeah. Uh, the danger of, and it's not against Queen's, but the Queen seems to be, in Northern Ireland, you've got the, the student quarter and all the rubbish that goes on. It's hard to find the beauty. Yeah, that's, oh. I think that's one of the most important things whenever you're picking a university. You know, that's going to be your home mm. for however long your course is. So, you know, you need to pick somewhere that you're going to enjoy, not just educationally, but also culturally. Yes. And next Wednesday, we're going to King's Hall. Yeah. The, uh, the careers department in St Paul's have organised all our year 13 students, near 200 of them are heading to the King's Hall UCAS convention. It's a fantastic event yeah. in that you have all your universities, there, uh, you know, North, for you. England, all that, yes. And so yeah. the students have the opportunity to get their brochures, to talk to them, yeah. to see what's on offer. I'm mightily impressed. I really, really am. And congratulations to you. Thank you. We're going to play you a bit of music. What have we got, um, uh, Andrew? We have something nice. Ah, Andrew has done it. He has done it. He's got it. The, most beautiful, the most beautiful woman in the world singing, Nana Mascuri. And the piece I was looking for earlier, and we've now managed to track down uh, through Andrew's hard effort there. It's, it's Greek. Uh, she's singing in, in her own language. And it's at a, a wonderful theatre in Athens. Lovely, lovely piece of music coming now. Go well. Take care. Great. Thank, Thank you. All the best to you. Bye-bye.